Hey, God bless you. Welcome to my channel. I'm excited for today's video because I know that God's going to speak to your life. The theme of today's video is this. God does not reward quitters, but you're not a quitter in Jesus' mighty name. And what we're going to be reading is from the book of Hebrews chapter 10. We're going to be reading verse 24 all the way to verse 39. And we're going to be reading about a group of believers who were going through so much persecution, so much suffering. They were going through so much tribulation, but the author of Hebrews was exhorting them. What is an exhortation? It's a strong encouragement. The author of Hebrews was exhorting them. Hey, look, pay attention. I know and I understand that you're going through pains, through fears, through tribulations, through sufferings, but that doesn't mean you can just shrink back. That doesn't mean you can just quit. That doesn't just mean you can give up on everything. And as a Christian, that's something that everyone needs to know. Every believer needs to know this, that we understand. God understands that you go through sufferings, through fears, through tribulation, through pains, through worries, through lacks, through necessities, through hungers. God understands those things. But just because you go through the storm, just because you go through the battle, just because you go through the desert, doesn't mean you shrink back. You got to keep on persevering. You got to keep on enduring because... God is faithful. God is not a liar. God is faithful and he will do and he will finish what he said he was going to do and he will finish the good work that he started in your life. King David said this, I was young and I am old, but I've never seen the king's children abandoned. I've never seen them forsaking. I've never seen them begging for bread. Jesus said that he even has his eye on the sparrows and they don't work and they don't store in barns, but he has his eye on the sparrows and he feeds them every single day. And he says, how much more value don't you think you're worth more than a sparrow? You're much more valuable than a sparrow. He said, and I dress the flowers that are here today and gone tomorrow. If I feed the birds and if I dress the flowers so beautifully, what makes you think that I won't give you what you need? What makes you think that I won't give you the clothes you need? So pay attention. Because in our terrible times, in our sorrows, in our pains, in our fears, in our worries, in our anxieties, in our depressions, there is not an excuse to shrink back and to stop. No, we have to keep on enduring. We have to keep on persevering. We have to keep on going forward because the power of God is living inside of you. And the power of God will help you go through anything you go through. Jesus said that if you have as much faith as a mustard seed, you can tell that mountain to be cast out the way and it will be cast out the way. When you trust in the Lord, when you believe his promises, it doesn't matter what obstacle, it doesn't matter what pain, what fear, it doesn't matter what tribulation, it doesn't matter what demon or what devil rises up against you, you will have the victory in the mighty name of Jesus. But we need to endure. So look what the author of Hebrews is telling the people here in Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 24 through 39, pay attention because this relates to each and every Christian today. Look what the Bible says. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see that day approaching. You see, the first thing that a lot of believers stop doing is they stop going to church. And the author of Hebrews is telling them, look, I understand you're going through pain. I understand you're going through worries and fears and tribulations and sorrows. But that doesn't mean that you got to stop attending church. That doesn't mean that you got to stop having Christian fellowship. We need Christian fellowship. When we get around Christian fellowship and we're discouraged, they're going to motivate us. We need Christian fellowship. When we get around like-minded believers who are looking from the outside in, they're going to be able to speak to us and help us. But the first thing that a lot of people want to stop doing is they want to stop having Christian fellowship. They want to separate themselves from the things of God. No, that's not the key. That's not the solution. And that's the first thing he tells them. He tells them, hey, don't stop congregating. And look what he says here. This is kind of scary, but I'm going to explain it. Look what the Bible says. If we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sins is left, but only a fearful expectation of judgment and of a raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. See, what he's talking about there is not the sins that might happen in our lives from day to day, but we repent and we confess them to the Lord and we can't walk, keep walking forward. The sins that he's talking about is living the sinful lifestyle. He's talking about people who are introduced to the grace of God, people who have the revelation of Jesus, but then they say, man, you know what? I don't want to be a Christian. I don't want to live for God. The goodness of God has been shown to them. The grace of God has been manifested to them. They have felt the power of the Holy Spirit. They have seen and felt the goodness of God. But then they make the conscious decision to say, I don't want to continue to be a Christian. I, I, I don't want to live in the Christian lifestyle. I don't want to trust in the Lord. And they know that God is good. They know that Jesus is who he said he is. But they don't want to walk that way. They choose the ways of the world instead. That's what it's talking about. It's saying, look, 
if you come to the Lord and then you go back to your old ways, there's not going to be a sacrifice for your sins. You have to stay in this path. You have to stay in this lifestyle for the sacrifice of your sins to be manifested. You can't just come, get a ticket, and then go back out and think, I got the ticket. No, it doesn't work like that. You got to stay in the kingdom of God. Look what the Bible continues to say. And don't worry, because when you humble yourself, God is the one that keeps you in the kingdom of God. Amen. God is the one that will keep you in his ways, but you just got to be humble. Look what else he continues to say. Anyone who rejected the law of Moses died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much more severely do you think someone deserves to be punished who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, who has treated as an unholy thing the blood of the covenant that sanctified them and who has insulted the Spirit of grace? He's talking about people who receive the forgiveness of Jesus Christ, who receive the revelation of Jesus, who receive the Holy Spirit, but then they make the conscious decision, the de deliberate decision to say, you know what? I don't want to live like this. I want to live for myself. I don't want to endure. I don't want to persevere. I want to live for myself. I want to live for my own sinful lifestyle. And I know you can be hearing this and you can say, would somebody actually say that? Yeah, there's actually people who say that. There's actually people who say that. And I'm not talking about somebody who has backslid. And I'm not talking about somebody who's struggling with the sin. I'm talking about there's people who have actually said, who have received the gift who have received the revelation, who have been enlightened through the Holy Spirit, and they say, nah, I don't want to, I don't want to live like that. I want to live for my own ways. See, but a backslider, he'll be backsliding. The Holy Spirit will be pulling at his heart, tugging at his heart, and the and that backslider will repent, or that backslider won't feel right because they know, they know that that's not the right lifestyle. God has hope for them. There is hope for them. Somebody struggling with the sin, they know that they're not living right. They know that do, that doesn't give honor and glory to God, and they keep giving it up to the Lord, and they keep confessing it, and they keep walking in the ways of the Lord. Oh, there's hope for them, and God will give you victory over that sin. But this is somebody who receives the enlightenment. This is somebody who receives receives the grace of God and they make the conscious deliberate decision to say I don't want it I don't want it that sounds crazy right that sounds like would people actually say that there is people who actually say that if there wasn't people who would say that it wouldn't be in the Bible look what does the word of God continues to say for we know him who said it is mine to avenge I will repay and again the Lord will judge his people it is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God Remember those earlier days when you had received the light and you endured a great conflict full of suffering. Sometimes you were publicly exposed to insult and persecution. At other times you stood side by side with those who were mistreated. You suffered along with those in prison and joyfully accepted the confiscation of your property because you knew that you yourselves had a better and lasting possession. So do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You know what the author of Hebrews is saying? Look, man, you've gone through so much. You've gone through so much. You've endured so much. You've already had so much faith. You've trusted God so much. Why are you going to quit? Don't quit now. Don't quit now. Your reward is coming. Your reward is almost there. Don't quit now. Why are you going to stop going to church now? Why are you going to stop having faith now? Why are you going to throw away your Christian confidence now? Why? It's going to get rewarded. Don't let the difficulties, don't let the circumstances, don't let the troubles and the sorrows and the fears and the temptations knock you down. You're already almost there. You will be rewarded. Tell yourself, I will be rewarded. Tell yourself again, I will be rewarded. Tell yourself again, I will be rewarded. Let me tell you now, you will be rewarded in the mighty name of Jesus. Why? Because I said so? No, because God said so, and God is not a liar. God is not a liar. God does not lie, and he says you will be rewarded. Let's continue to read. Look what the Bible says. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. Look what he quotes. For just in a little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. Talking about the Lord. He's returning one day. Look what else it says here, verse 38. And, but my righteous ones will live by faith, and I take no pleasure in those who shrink back. God is saying, I don't have pleasure in those who shrink back. But then look what the author of Hebrews says, and this is true for us today. But we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have faith and are saved. You know what God is telling you? You're not a quitter. You're not a quitter. I know you feel like quitting, but you're not a quitter. You're not those who shrink back and lose the reward. You're not those who shrink back and are destroyed in their sins. You're not them. That's not you. You are those who persevere. You are those who will receive the reward. You are those who give glory and honor to God. I know you might be going through difficulties right now. I know you might be going through troubles right now. I know you are. But continue to walk forward. Continue to persevere. Because God promises that you will receive your reward. And God promises that he will not delay. It says that when we're going through these troubles, what he's producing in us 
is perseverance. Continue to walk forward. Trust the Lord. You've already endured so much. You've already battled so much. You've already run the good race so much. Don't quit. Don't throw away your confidence. Receive your reward in Jesus' mighty name. I pray this video was a blessing to your life. If it was, do me a favor. Subscribe. I post weekly videos that I hope and pray will be a great encouragement to your life. So if this video was an encouragement, subscribe. And also, if you want to show your appreciation for this channel or these videos, you can do so by a feature at the bottom of the screen called Super Thanks. Those are always a great blessing to my life. Those are always greatly appreciated. Thank you. God bless you. I'll see you soon, Lord willing. Have a blessed day.